David McCrane with RDD Enterprises. You, you're here with the LX-7 airplane, which is a little bit of a different concept. Tell us about this project. And the LX-7 is a conversion to the Lance Air 4P aircraft. So we take a flying Lance Air 4P and we replace the wing completely and the tail section completely. And we do a lot of other very interesting and innovative safety modifications to the aircraft. And we return it to service. So take us through some of those steps in a little bit more detail. We help the owner locate an airplane first of all. And then we transport that airplane, either we fly it or we transport it on the ground to Redmond, Oregon, which is where our facility is. And at that facility then we disassemble the aircraft. We do not reuse any of the flying surfaces, so the aerodynamic parts are all completely replaced. All of those wing and tail sections then are completely made new. We do 100% of the work in-house. So we lay up the parts and we bond the parts and we geometrically locate them to one another in our facility paint the aircraft, run it through final assembly with its interior and avionics, and then we put it back into action. What inspired you to undertake converting an airplane as opposed to starting from scratch and building a new one? Well, that's an interesting question. So if we convert an airplane, it gives us a couple of advantages. One is uh, we start with some of the equipment that's required for the aircraft, so it makes the airplane more affordable. The initiation of the project was let's make the airplane safer, and how do we do that? How do we make it fly better? and perform better, so that's the genesis of the conversion. Now, I understand you've done some flying in the airplane. How does this compare to the donor airplane? How did the flying characteristics change because you've changed out a lot of the flying surfaces? We have changed those flying surfaces, so it flies like a completely different airplane. It has a much slower stall speed, a better approach speed, better stall handling. So that was all the work that we did on the low end of the envelope. And then the cruise speed, we were able to retain the stellar cruise speed performance of the Lance Air 4P, which is what we really wanted to do with the LX-7, was give people high performance with less risk. Airplane has extremely long legs, I understand, as well. It does. So our piston version holds 180 gallons of fuel. So you can go about 2,400 nautical miles without stopping in that aircraft. Now, you, you do have a piston and a turbo version, too. We do. We have a turboprop, 550 shaft horsepower Pratt & Whitney powered airplane. It has a 1,400 nautical mile range and cruises at 280 knots. It has a great climb speed and it's quieter, a little bit quieter and more, a little more comfortable to ride in. Now the Lance Air also came in a piston and a turboprop. Does it matter which airframe they find as the donor airframe? That's a very good question. We do want to start with the piston 4P. How many of those airplanes are out there for you to work on? There are about 250 uh, eligible 4Ps for us to modify and convert to an LX-7. So you've got 250 donor airplanes potentially. That'll eventually run out. What then? Well, we've looked at that case. We're studying it, um, what it would take for us to produce the whole aircraft from the get-go. That would then turn it into a 51% project. People would have to come and participate with us, but we would be able to, if needed, produce our own fuselage. And of course, the other thing that everyone's going to ask you is, what does it cost? The turboprop version, you'll come in under a million, about $970,000. And the piston version will be about $150,000 less than that. There's a little bit of elasticity in there based on the donor plane price. And when you get in the airplane, what's in the cockpit? We have a full Garmin suite of avionics. We are an OEM with Garmin. They treat us like they treat all other OEMs. You get two big EFIS screens in there, Garmin G3X Touch screens and a GTN 750 is a FMS. The optional third screen goes up in the middle and you'll see that there for the pilots to put their display of their charts and approach plates and that sort of thing if they desire. Okay, well great David, well thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us. We look forward to coming over to the booth and seeing the airplane and uh, have a great show. Thank you Tom, appreciate it. Aero TV is brought to you by